Good morning, guys. We are already here in Cozumel. Um, I'm actually going to drop a few clips into the vlog. Um, Robert actually went up on deck. Good morning, sunshine. Robert actually went up on deck this morning with my parents and got some video of us docking and actually got a really cool clip of a ray actually jumping out of the water. Um, very Moana-esque, but um, we are getting ready to go down to the Walt Disney Theater to meet up with our excursion to go to the Mayan Cacao Company and see the bees and do some tequila tasting. It's gonna be a really fun day. So excited to bring you guys along for sure. Hey guys, we made our way into the Walt Disney Theater. Um, just a little piece of information that might be helpful to you guys if you're doing an excursion. Typically you don't want to show up until about 15 minutes before your kind of arrival time for your excursion. Ours was 10.45, no, 9.45. My watch is not synced up to Cozumel time. Um, so our arrival time was 9.45 and they started bringing us back here at about 9.30. So um, we're just going to hang out here in the Walt Disney Theater, watch some Mickey cartoons, and wait to get off the boat and go explore Cozumel. Yeah. Here we go, off the ship. Absolutely beautiful out here. So warm, but so gorgeous. Good morning. So good to see. Okay. 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 How are you? Very nice, thank you. All your family is right here? Uh, three of us. The three of us, yes. yep. Okay, excellent. Yes, because we have two different transportations. Okay, great. right there we'll be fine okay awesome thank you, thank you. Everybody start to speak Spanish after the tequila. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> these things happen right here. So my family, right here in Mexico, we really like to say, mi casa es su casa, okay? My home is your home. You're more than welcome right here in Cosmo Lion. Thank you so much for the visit. My name is Paco, okay? So don't forget my name. Remember, you are the Paco team right now, my family, okay? If you forget my name, Sugar Honey Handsome, it's okay. No problem, okay? <laughs> but finally, I never work alone. Uh, we have another person really important for this institution that will be my friend in my right side, Mr. Cesar. Cesar, our bus driver, he's an excellent driver. So let me hear a big clap for Cesar. <laughs> Cesar is an excellent driver. We are in our really good hands. Actually, Cesar, he is uh, on the top 10 for the best bus drivers in all of the island. Yes, of course. We have 10 bus drivers in all the island, but he is in a really good place, okay? <laughs> I think we're fine, thank you. 
We are here at the Mayan Cacao Company. So excited to see how all this is made. Let me know something that you're gonna see right there. First, you're gonna see a bird, a bird that they call it Quetzal. The Quetzal is a really beautiful bird that we're gonna find in Central America and in the Mayan area. That one is still, it's where it started the legend for a god in the Mayan time, in the Mayan mythology. Because that bird have a really, really long tail. Now, if you see flying that one right there in the sky, looks like a snake, actually a snake with feathers. And it started to form the, uh, one of the gods in the Mayan mythology. I really want to uh, tell you know, let you know that one because that one is something really beautiful that we have right here, okay? And after, I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more. They grind the cocoa beans and with that powder, they're gonna mix with hot water and the Mayans call it chocoja. The chocoja was a mixed drink, uh, that means hot water, and that one was used in festivities, in ceremonies. Was not a drink for a cold days, no? Was a drink for festivities, for ceremonies, that they use it from that time. And actually, was so important to cocoa beans that in a part of the Mayan period, the cocoa beans start to use it like a currency. So the Mayans, they, has, uh, they don't have gold. They don't have sterling silver because this is not a land with gold and sterling silver, no? So they roasted the cocoa beans and that cocoa beans can survive for many, many times actually roasted. So they start to use like the currency. They pay for foods, for service with roasted cocoa beans. So what's so important that one that uh, even convert in a currency for the Mayans. So who say that the money doesn't grow at the trees? <laughs> you are gorgeous. Oh yeah? Yeah, you know. You know. Yeah. This is really cool. They have the altar elements for the Day of the Dead. Absolutely gorgeous. So beautiful. All right, I've got my uh, corn tortilla and my mole. Let's give it a try. Oh my goodness. That is so good. And the chocolate, the peppers. It's delicious. You sure you don't want one? Oh, so good. So good. De acuerdo, amigos, familia, ¿alguien sabe de qué Yeah. Welcome to the Caribbean, welcome to the Mayan Cacao Company. Today I'm your host, my name is Angel or Angel. And I want to show you one of my favorite things, the chocolate. Do you like chocolate? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take these coconuts, and it's already roasted, and I place them on the metate. The metate is a grinding table, heavy limestone, that my young women used to have for preparing food. The flowers, the spices, medicines, different kind of things. Every time you see something like this, remember the beautiful tradition in a beautiful way. A metate belongs to a, a woman, to her mother, to her grandmother, great-grandmother. I can talk very easy of 200 years of tradition about one single stone. And well, this is the way I make it. I'm gonna grind the coconuts. Excelente, very good. <laughs> Sorry, somebody has to do it. <laughs> and well, many years ago, the Mayans didn't have any milk or sugar, but they got many condiments, many plants, and from those condiments, they are three important ingredients. The first one is the old spice. I'm sure everybody knows the old spice, right? Sorry about my terrible pronunciation. Sometimes people confuse that with the aftershave or the yogurt. <laughs> no. Yes, and chocolate is a good medicine. Sometimes people say, oh, come on, Angel, really? Yes. This chocolate is more than 90%. No sugars, no milk. But what do we, can we find in here? We can find a lot of caffeine, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, ibuprofen, more than 50 good elements. But sometimes people say, oh, come on, really? Yes. Because a regular chocolate bar, a cookie, an ice cream, or a piece of cake has only 10% of cocoa. Maybe 20. 
What is the rest, familia? You can answer me that question. Sugar, colorants, chemicals, additives, gluten, and some other things that I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> Why? It was bitter. So they decide to add by the first time sugar. So here we go. One spoon. Then we add a little bit of honey. Precious and delicious honey. Then we have pure and dark vanilla. Uno, dos, y tres. Vanilla, is that correct to say? Uh, okay, and now I need only 10 seconds to show you how easy it is to make chocolate. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got pre-Hispanic chocolate. Thank you very much. <laughs> what I call soap style. Which, what did you get? Uh, these are chocolate margaritas. Okay. And he basically poured it into the shot glass and then let it kept going out of the shot glass into the blender. So <laughs> there's a lot of it in there. <laughs> so we came into the shop here at the Mind Food Cow Company and we are buying some chocolate. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So there's lots of different kinds of chocolate here. How's the margarita? Strong. Yeah, do you like it though? Yeah, I had a little sip of mine, it was delicious. Sanctuary. This is quite possibly the part of this tour that I was the most excited about. So, really excited to see the bees. Welcome. Very nice presentation with my good friend. One of the important things of this Mayan welcome is sometimes when we visit an area for the bees and they smell something different, something a tourist, they start to move more. So we have the copal that is for a tree, that is an incense actually. And we're gonna try to smell like a local one, no? like in the local area. So enjoy this beautiful presentation. Don't be afraid, okay? Um, there will be no sacrifices. <laughs> Just safe. <laughs> Okay, listos, ready? Malo king suku, bishabelish, hashkima kingwo, in kao tiktech. Satun malo muk, halach winik, amusen kap. Satun malo muk, halach winik. Shun and Kap Jetil Jum Kash Tan Shun and Kap Jekyll, Cap, Kalitagoni, Minak Yetel Tiakmeya, Signal Signali, Anashta Tavina Kastik, Tu Ush Ajakta Uyik Elol, Lebi Shatu Lechesh Ishkala, Letik Kanatik. Agua Touch. 
Lik iktal tulukim kustal Tiolalesunam Ayukilka Jumbotik um, Jumbotik In Maya language means thank you okay? Thank you for your visit You are ready now Okay One of the things that I want to show you Before I start to see the bees We're gonna take a look around the area and we're gonna find the entrance of a cenote. Remember the cenote, the sinkhole. Uh, for us, it's really important. But we're gonna find different kind of cenotes, okay? One of the cenotes are in the open areas like this one. Another cenotes, you need to go to a cave after you're gonna start to find the fresh water right there. So we're gonna find a different kind of these caves, of these sinkholes. For the Maya mythology, really important because for the, Ma the Maya people believe that if you go through the cenote, you're gonna cross a portal and what you're gonna find? The underworld, okay? So in the Mayan time, they believe that the cenote is the entrance for the Shivalba or the Mayan underworld right there and leave the gods of the devastation, the gods of destruction. Is the reason because the Mayans take offerings, ceramic, jake, obsidian, to the cenotes and right now the archaeologists what they're gonna start to do they start to dive in the cenotes no they dive in the cenotes or they, they start to find artifacts from the Mayan time but the people they start to find it older things things that thousand years before the Mayans for example and the peninsula Yucatan in the cenotes they find a skull for a tiger save it okay they find a bear Nine feet, okay, it was a mega fauna, animals from the ice age that live right here in the peninsula. When the caves was not full of water, was no cenotes, was only caves, someone died right there, and they start to find skeletons in the cenotes. The only thing that they don't find is dinosaurs, actually, you know? <laughs> but the dinosaurs, actually, one of the theories is because we have a lot of cenotes, it's because a big rock from the sky hit the peninsula of Yucatan. You know, the meteorite, the big one, Shikshulu meteorite, hit and they make a ring of cenotes that we call Shikshulu ring on the peninsula of Yucatan. So we're gonna see around the area and after we're gonna take a look at this, okay? The height for the Melipona bee will be a piece of wood like this one, okay? In a piece of wood, the bee is gonna make a tiny hole that will be the entrance and the exit. Actually, in a minute we can see closer that the bees are right there, okay? It's one entrance, one exit, but all this area is the beehive, okay, my family? So right here in the middle, we're gonna find the queen and the bees go, uh, they go to the area, they call it hunt, they call it pollen and after they arrive to the hobon or the hive and this is how they live, the melipona bee that we have in the peninsula of Yucatan the melipona bee, like I explained it, is a stingless bee no a sting for this one and it's smaller than a regular bee the European bee or the African bee are not native from this area but we have 16 different kinds of melipona only in the peninsula of Yucatan. Only in our area we're gonna have 16 different ones. And this one produce honey. Produce a really nice honey that our Maya people use it. Not exactly for it, they use it more for medicinal reasons, okay? They mix the honey <coughs> with the different plants for this area and they only have an answer for your pain for you, no? So, uh, like in our times, see, uh, for our area, if you ask to your grandmother that you have a stomach problem, they always gonna have a tea for you, you know? They have something, a solution for the plants, and this one is part of our heritage. So, the Melipona <coughs> bee is in danger, okay? That one is really close to the extinction. That one is for many reasons. The weather start to change. The introduction of a different bees like the, uh, like the European, like the African, that take more territory. But this is the hobon. This is the hive that they use it. Okay. It's gonna exit. They collect honey. One of the good things of the 
of the bees right here in Cozumel is they don't feel the winter, you know, because in Cozumel uh, we don't have winter like that one actually, you know, our winter is 68 Fahrenheit, you know. So proud of yourself. It's my handiwork right here. Oh, is it? You made that? <laughs> okay. They're snacking in the hand, so I think that's it now. Yes. <laughs> that's Such a peaceful area out here. Absolutely beautiful. The bees were so tiny. Mm. Oh. Welcome everybody to this beautiful place called Barriecito. Barriecito with R's. Can you say that please? Barriecito. Barriecito. Exactly. Roll your R's. You're in Mexico. It'll be faster after the, the tequila samples. ¿De acuerdo? We're going to bring uh, for the rest of you. When, you. when you get your samples, please don't bring them yet. ¿De acuerdo? I'm going to give you some instructions. Talk about the process a little bit. And how it's supposed to be drink. And then we can enjoy all together. ¿Estamos de acuerdo? ¿All clear? Muy bien. First of all, I want to ask, has anyone tried tequila before? Yes. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? Good memories? Bad memories? Yes. No memories? A bit of everything? Yeah. Ok, ok. It's a good start, good start. Anyone knows where tequila comes from? What's the main ingredient, the plant that we use for tequila? Agave. Exactly. In the world, there are around 300 types of agave. Just in Mexico, 200. But there's only one that we can use for tequila, which is agave azul. Blue agave. All of the tequilas worldwide are have to be blue agave. If it's made with a different type of agave, it's not tequila. That's super important. ¿De acuerdo? Records from last year tell us that Mexico produces around 500 million liters of tequila. So that's a lot, a lot of blue agave that we need to have in the country. We are not allowed to produce tequila all around the country. Out of the 32 states in the Mexican Republic, only five have the qualifications and the certifications to produce tequila, mainly in Jalisco. In Jalisco state is the mother of tequila. So all of those 500 million liters only come from those five states. Usually around the world there's a misconception that tequila has to be drank in a shot. I just saw a lot of people doing that with the red one. You just saw it, you close your eyes. <laughs> you should never do that, not only with tequila, but with any type of spirit. Good, good you're, you're putting a lot of alcohol into your system super fast. You're gonna you're not gonna have time to digest it. You know, one tequila, two tequila, three tequila. Floor. There you go. How is it? Good? I would love to. We just finished our tasting at Barrecito here in Cozumel. Um, the tequila tasting was absolutely wonderful. We tried three different kinds. One that was like a hibiscus tequila, one that was just your typical blue agave tequila, and then one was a coffee liqueur. And all three were just super smooth, super delicious, super easy to drink. Um, 
And they did make jokes about the fact that um, you shouldn't actually take shots of tequila because, um, as they say, one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, four. Um, but they said that your body doesn't have time to digest the tequila, and so it can get you into a lot of trouble. Um, and they were just making some jokes about that, and they were talking about the fact that taking tequila shots actually came from um, just old school Mexican Hollywood movies, um, which we've all seen. Um, and it typically ends in people bar fighting. So they said that you should definitely drink it just like you would a good wine or a bourbon. Slowly sip it, small sips, really take the moment to enjoy the aromatics of the tequila. Um, and I put a clip of that in before this. I'm sure you guys saw that. But um, just absolutely a fantastic excursion. Highly, highly, highly recommend the best of Cozumel if you're coming on this seven night sailing on the Disney Fantasy or any sailing that happens to come to Cozumel. Seriously, you guys, just so good. The Mayan Cacao Company was fantastic. The chocolate was delicious. We also had chocolate margaritas. What did you think of your chocolate margarita? Very good. Just very strong, right? Very strong. <laughs> yeah, I think he got the bottle of the bear, the bottom of the bottle, <laughs> um, because Zach's was super strong. He actually ended up giving most of it to Robert. Um, hey, babe, what did you think of the chocolate margarita? It was really good. It yeah. Was basically, all out of liquor with chocolate and milk. Yeah. So good basically, though. chocolate milk with tequila. Oh yeah. Like a milkshake though, right? Cause it, was, very good. it was blended? Yeah. Yeah. So very, very good. I loved that chocolate margarita. It was absolutely delicious. Um, yeah, the three of us have had a lot of fun today and now we're probably going to go and explore the port just for a few minutes before we get back on the ship and uh, get ready to enjoy the evening's 4th of July festivities. I don't think there's fireworks tonight. Um, we're just like we're just basically just frozen and whatever else is under normal. Yeah, we're going Monday. to see Frozen tonight on the ship, so really looking forward to that. And then after that, we have dinner tonight at Royal Palace, or no, sorry, that's on the Disney Dream. Royal Court is where our dinner is tonight. Very excited about that. Definitely going to be eating some snails. Um, yeah, we're just going to enjoy this bus ride back to the ship and or rather back to the port um, and explore port for a little bit and see what we can find there. Now headed back to the fantasy from our excursion. I really liked Cozumel. Did you guys enjoy it? It was really, really nice. Headed back to the ship. We're not going to be pier runners, guys. We're getting ready to go to the pool. We're taking another look at Cozumel and you can see way out there just how much of this island is just completely undeveloped. Our tour guide Paco was telling us that about 75% of the island of Cozumel is completely undeveloped and untouched. It is absolutely beautiful. I do see a little 
a storm coming in over there though. So hopefully we can get a, a little bit of pool time in before that hits us. Hey guys, I've got beautiful Cosmo Mexico over here behind me. Do the views get any better than this? It's absolutely gorgeous out here. It is sunny and, but it's like, it's not miserably hot either, which is amazing. Um, I did want to tell you guys about these sunglasses because they have been amazing today. Um, I got these sunglasses from Paradise Adventure Company, um, Griff and Alyssa here on YouTube. It's their website. Um, but yeah, it's Paradise Adventure Co. And I love these. These are the rose all day ones. Um, but they also just came out with these like, pink lemonade ones. They're super, super cute. Um, but they're super comfy. They stay on my face. Even when we got like super sweaty going around Cozumel, they stayed on my face, which was fantastic because I am the queen of oily skin and I'm the queen of sunglasses falling off my face. And these did not, they stayed in place. Um, and I was able to see everything all day, which was so fantastic. Um, now I'm just enjoying the top deck of the ship for a little bit. Um, gonna enjoy the pool for a little while longer. We ordered drinks. Robert's looking at me right now, waiting on me to come uh, get my drink. And um, just gonna enjoy this and then get ready to go see Frozen in the Walt Disney Theater. We are waiting for dinner at Royal Court. Mom is very excited. Uh, what did you think of Frozen? Awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome. it was so fun. So we were just over talking to Kathy, who is actually Robert and my DBC guide. And um, now we're just hanging out, waiting right here in front of Royal Court. Um, I do plan to eat some escargot tonight. Uh, I think my dad is going to join me in that. So I'm very excited to have that. And probably some deep fried brie. I think the appetizers at Royal Court might be my favorite. Now, the black truffle pasta per sets at Animator's Palette are But I definitely think that the deep fried brie with the cranberry chutney on the side is where it's at. So, um, it is 4th of July, so I've got my headband and um, my red and the red lip. Um, but yeah, very excited for dinner, ready to just enjoy a great meal with the family after a very busy day in Cosmo. A salad if you want I, did, I got the Good. escargot. Then you get it in a minute. The deep fried brie. Tim, how is it? Pork. Well, I haven't gotten there yet. Oh. <laughs> Mom got the French onion soup. Robert got the shrimp and the brie. And we're waiting on Dad's escargot, but it all looks fabulous as always. All right, guys, it is dessert time. 
And if you have ever been on a Disney cruise, you know what we do with this right here. How's the opera cake? Good. A lot of flavor. Yeah. Also, Tita, our amazing waitress, knew that dad was having a hard time deciding between both. So he got the opera cake and she brought him the Grand Marnier souffle anyways. It looks so good. I already right. hollowed out my home. Yes. Skyline Lounge right now. Um, I'm having to vlog on my phone because my camera died, but we just got this infusion. So all of the bars, you can see it they over have like here, a cart of some kind. have like bar carts, but each of them is doing like an infusion right now. And this one is Buffalo Trace bourbon with coffee beans, oranges, and cherries. Um, and it's basically an old fashioned, but the with coffee flavor in it as well from actually just being infused with coffee beans. Um, you guys, this is absolutely stellar um, and a great nightcap before we go to bed. I am exhausted. I also burned my throat on my Grand Marnier souffle, so my throat is a little sore, and this is exactly what I needed tonight. Um, we just heard Moonshot. It was their last performance of the cruise, so we heard them. It was fantastic. And um, had some drinks. And we're just enjoying the rest of our evening, relaxing, and getting ready to um, go to bed and get some good sleep so that we can really enjoy our snorkeling excursion tomorrow in the Caymans. Guys, I almost forgot to show you the towel animal for tonight, I think it's a lobster. I'm not really sure, but he's cute. I like him. He's kind of more of a blanket animal. Yeah. But he's so cute and he has chocolate, so. I think this is one of my favorite parts about coming back to the room every night. Other than knowing I'm about to go to sleep. There's also a giant thunderstorm outside. Yeah, there is. We're shaking a lot right now. <laughs> but Robert gets baseball on TV, so he's happy. The night game on ESPN is the Braves game. And we um, had a rain delay, so the boys are still on TV. So we're <laughs> actually getting to watch Braves baseball from our state room on the Disney Fantasy. And this guy is in hog heaven because his random little side food bar was stocked full of food. What are you eating right Just now? Just picture every freezer or snack that you can buy at any local Yeah, I mean, store. but they're like handmade bagel bites. 
chicken and like wontons. chicken wontons and, and beef sliders and they all look delicious i got some stuff to you but i'll be honest guys my my eyes are bigger than my stomach and i ate a couple pieces and i was like Bleh. it's 11 o'clock at night and i don't bulk, need Will? to be eating oh boy will can i do you from 48 my 100 miles away well guys i'm gonna end the vlog here because if we end up somehow throwing this game away it's it's not gonna go well for us so uh, is open till two. good night guys hope you guys have a wonderful night day whatever time you're watching this and i will see you in the next vlog